Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. I've got Ceci Barreto here with Venice is Speaking, uh, not just a blog anymore, it's a wine shop. Yes. So uh, I invited her to come over, um, well originally it was going to come over to the, the wine shop and do an interview um, and then uh, just let me know that you have a couple wines here that we're doing a Twitter tasting at the same time. And uh, so I to, instead of bringing the set to her, which I wouldn't have brought all of this, um, <laughs> we'll bring her to here, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so we're doing this at the same time. Uh, this is going to be uh, just, just, just this first episode. Um, real quick, just to kind of give some people a little heads up of what's going to be happening with the show. Um, things are going to change slightly. Uh, we won't be doing three shows a week anymore. Um, it'll be one show a week. It'll be a 30-minute show. We'll have uh, the, the normal yeah. setup. Will be The first segment will be a value wine, something that's under $20 but normally around $10. Um, the second segment will be something of like a premium wine, so twenty dollars and above. Try to stick between twenty and forty. Try not okay. to go too expensive because remember, I am paying for this wine. <laughs> Unless you want to donate, hit the button. Um, and then uh, the third segment will be typically some type of educational thing, or or it could be a short interview with somebody. I was um, thinking it was going to be like 150 <laughs> plus wine. <laughs> no, no, Not no, yet. no. Um, it'll be some type of educational thing or something special. Uh, also, if, say, one of the other segments goes long, like say I do two bottles of one mm -hmm. type of thing, that just means that that segment will, will be longer. So the goal is about 30 minutes. Um, the reason for this is I see that most of the people who watch the show are actually sitting in the comfort of their couch instead of sitting at their computer. Okay. Um, it's... When you're sitting in front of your computer or using a mobile device to watch a video, you know once you get to ten minutes, people start getting antsy. Yeah, yeah. they did. They don't like to. Uh, I did turn that on. Okay, Woo. make sure you turn the <laughs> microphone on. I've done stupid things before where I didn't turn sound on and no. uh, bad things happen. <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, so anyway. So after, you know, once you get to about 10 minutes, people tend to not want to sit in front of their computer and watch a video. doesn't mean they won't sit in front of the computer for hours on end. Mm -hmm. It's just watching videos. Uh, whereas you sit on the couch, you're, you're, you're golden. Um, yeah. We've recently had some additions to the house as far as electronics, and I've been able to really test some of this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you have smart TVs, if you have Apple TVs, you've got Xboxes, you've got Roku's, TiVo's, they all can access this show somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. um, Either through the podcast, through uh, iTunes, either or going through uh, Blip.tv. If you have like the TiVo uh, box, they have the you can go through Blip TV or TiVo. Actually, you can subscribe in TiVo to the stream. Um, the Roku box I think has the Blip TV app. <clears throat> you can also look at it through Vimeo, YouTube, Apple TV the same way. Smart TVs, Blu-ray players, Xboxes. They all can access YouTube. Yeah. Some of them can access Vimeo. Um, or Daily Motion, which I don't really send the program to Daily Motion much anymore yeah. um, because I have to upload it to somewhere else. Okay. But um, so it, it's accessible through a lot of ways. And uh, so that's how it's going to be. If you watch it through the Blip TV player, you will see ads. Um, as always, they've always been there. Um, eventually, I will hopefully try to put actual ads inside of the inside of the video. Like, yeah. You know, if you if you ever like listen to podcasts or watch podcasts, mm -hmm. they'll have like the, the host will like have read copy or talk about something. So it won't be like a it won't be like a produced ad, it won't be yeah. like some video that I've slipped in unless someone wants to do that. It'll be more like, Hey, you know, uh, next time you wanna go buy some wine, why don't you hit such and such? Well, finish the speaking wine shop. Or, you know, uh, hey, I checked I'm checking out some new wine key and if you can find it at such and such place or go online to find okay. it. Um so it'll be something like that. I haven't approached anyone yet, but that's the idea. Make it a little bit more of a show because I'm starting to call it a show rather than a podcast. Okay. So that's what's going on. Uh, so we get that out of the way. And um, let's see. So 
let's let's kind of do the interview thing first, um, and then we'll start going into the tasting. We'll get into the chat room, and it looks like the live thing is just not working. So uh, we're gonna stop this. We're gonna stop broadcasting here for a second. <clears throat> I'm gonna get rid of this eyeglasses thing because I, I found that eyeglasses sometimes is this Mac program supposed to make it your um, thing better. Um, a lot of times, really does some stupid stuff. So we're gonna get rid of that and then, um, all right, we'll broadcast with the regular FaceTime thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so <clears throat> let's do, let's uh, let's kind of do the interview thing. Okay. So. <clears throat> We've known each other for a little while, so I already kind of know, already kind of know Ceci's backstory. Um, but kind of talk to me about um, really how you got into wine first, and then we'll kind of, then we'll progress into like getting to the wine shop. Okay. Um, well, for me, to the beginning of my wine journey was actually a monetary reason. Um, I was under twenty-one, uh -huh. and my first one of my first jobs out of high school, or well, the end of high school. Um, before I went to college was at a French bistro that used to be here in San Antonio. And I was the only uh, server under 21. And I was noticing that all of my tips were much lower than the other servers. So I started to notice that it was because they had wine sales and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So it amazed me though. I was like, well, how can they just look at a bottle and say, <laughs> and go off for, you know, five, ten minutes on it. And so I decided that I needed to figure out what to say so that I could add, you know, $15, $20, $30 a bottle to the tab, therefore increase my tips. So I talked to the owner and I was always asking questions and, um, you know, okay, so what goes good with this and how come and why and what does that mean and where is that? Okay, so finally I was able to make suggestions to the people that were um, at my tables and I started, my tips increased. Mm -hmm. So I said, well... Obviously, the more I know about wine, the more I can push the more expensive ones. So it just was really a monetary reason. Um, then the um, owner at the time said that if it was like, here's my parents, he was okay to let me go to staff trainings. I won't mm -hmm. mention any names because okay. I don't want him to get in trouble for that. So my parents would come and pick me up and I would go to the tastings. Right. Um, spit it out, of course, but still. And yeah. so my parents were fine with that, and uh, I remember the first sip of a wine I ever took, and it was uh, Schlumberger Riesling, the main Schlumberger Riesling. I thought it was phenomenal, and from ever since then, I was really into wine. Um, I went to college once I was 21. A lot of my college friends were really into it as well. They grew up in households where it was part of dinner, and mm -hmm. their parents enjoyed it. So we would go to wine bars or you know some tastings around Los Angeles where I was in college. And came back from college, decided I would take a break before I applied for law school, and uh, worked for a company called The Traveling Vineyard. I did in-home wine tastings, and came to the realization that law school was not my passion and wine was. Okay. And uh, went off to do my master's in France, and came back and opened the shop. <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, so where were you in France? Um, I studied in Dijon, uh, the capital of Burgundy. And it was at the, um, in French, it's the École Supérieure de Commerce de Bourgogne. And in English, it's the Burgundy School of Business. Okay. So that's where I was at. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How long were you over there? Um, it's, I was there in France for two and a half years. I did nine months of a language course because I originally wanted to take the French version of the master's because I didn't know the English version uh, was had a, just been created. So they emailed me to ask me if I would want to be part of the first group of the English version of the master's. So um, I entered into that, and it was a year-long course with six-month internship, and that was the master's of science in wine business. So yeah. awesome, yeah. Cause she knows French. Trust me, I, I've heard her speak it, and I'm like, uh, I'm supposed to learn this when I went to France, and I never did. So, um, <clears throat> but. Um, so yeah, I mean, so you went there and you actually learned how to speak French. It wasn't yes. like you knew really anything ahead of time. Nope. Yeah. And so um, it was a pretty intensive studying. Yes. Um, month one through three was sort of the honeymoon phase. You know, you learn words, and you know, three through nine were really the intense ones. That's where your comprehension is better than your vocabulary and your sentence forming. So you understand more or less what's happening in a conversation, but you can't put a sentence together fast enough to be part of the conversation. Um, so those were pretty brutal months. And French is, while it sounds beautiful when you're trying to pick apart words, it's frustrating because 
you know, a sentence sounds like one word. And <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Well, you know, and no offense to the French, but I, I, I call French the language of mumblers. So, <laughs> and, and German the language of, of people who like to hawk loogies. So, <laughs> you know, Italian sounds beautiful. Yeah. Doesn't sound like ASA, but, you know, hey, I'm a little partial to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with the whole, like, a word or, a, you know, sounds like a whole sentence. And, you know, I, I've, I've listened to you and I've listened to other people speak it. And, and while, you know, having the, my Latin background mm -hmm. has helped me with Spanish and Italian, it helps with French, but only if I'm reading the French. Yeah. If I'm listening to it, I'm completely lost. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. so, yeah. All right, so you did the language and then you did the course. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the type of stuff that you did uh, yeah. in, at the, at the, at the uh, school? Well, it was uh, one of the most fascinating parts of the master's uh, program that I did was that they utilized technology a lot. Um, one of which is that we would use webcam as a way to bring in lecturers from other countries. So we would have um, you know, guest lecturers from Hong Kong to Australia to Chile, Argentina, the US. And that was really neat because you would get a global view of the curriculum. And um, it was pretty much a lot of the things you would learn in an MBA program. Okay. Very, I mean, a lot more briefly, but with wine as the focus behind them. So, you know, you would learn um, your, you know, con consumer relationship, you know, management programs or project management or, um, you know, consumer theory, um, anything from branding to, um, you know, social media, internet um, marketing, those sorts of uh, courses, and with the wine industry as the background. So I thought it was neat, and it was also really nice to have the collection of students that were more business. Maybe they had had an undergraduate in business, okay. and some of others that had more of a background in wine. So when you combine them, you know, the ones that knew about wine would help the ones that knew more, you know, less about it and vice versa. Okay. So that was really neat. And we were a, a pretty diverse group. Um, we were the first program to go through and it was um, someone from Russia, Malta, China, Finland, Sweden, U.S. I um, can't remember where else, but it was very, <laughs> very, uh, very neat to have that. So. Cool. All right. So then you came back to the States mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, Talk about what you were doing between coming back and opening up the wine mm -hmm. shop. Um, so while I was in, in France, I started a wine blog because I wanted a way to have my friends and family keep up with what I was doing. And a lot of my friends and family aren't as geeky into wine as I am. Yes. <laughs> as I'm sure you understand. <laughs> so I knew that I had to make my wine blog speak to them, mm -hmm. but still keep them up with what we were doing. And uh, try to make it funny because the one thing, and you know, because you've met my family, is humor is our, you know, part of our last name. So I made a wine blog just essentially to keep up with them and also because I didn't want to repeat my stories on the phone. So <laughs> right. <laughs> just go to my blog and find out. Um, then eventually after a couple of months, I started getting comments from people that I didn't know. And they were telling me, this is great. You know, we feel like we're on an adventure. We're learning about wine. It's funny. And so I sort of thought to myself, you know, I guess I should kind of open it a bit more to welcome other people that are out there and not, you know, not that I wouldn't change the audience I was writing to because that seemed right. to work, but consider making it something a little larger than just a private blog. And so um, I started looking at other wine blogs to help direct where I wanted to go. And then I just got all geeky into that and figured out what you should do and shouldn't do and styles and, you know, what you can you know, put onto it and niches and how to get it going. And um, I ended up doing my internship for my master's with the um, couple, an American couple living in Spain that started the uh, European Wine Blogger Conference. Um, and so their wine blog is Catavino or Catavino. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did the internship with them. So I was thrust into this entire conference of wine bloggers. You know, everyone takes photos of wines and foods. And I'm like, right. hey, I'm not the only weird one that takes these. <laughs> And uh, so through that, um, I was you know, doing my internship, and I, when I came home, I decided, you know, I could go and work, whether it was at a distributor, or importer, or something, or I could take a real big leap and decide to build the brand on itself. So I took a couple of side jobs. I worked at a cheese department here in uh, Central Market to beef up my cheese knowledge, if right. I can say that. <laughs> 
<laughs> this probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> this probably won't match up to the, to the but hey, you know, hey, yeah. geez. <laughs> and, and, you know, pay the bills. And then mm -hmm. I focused on building up Venusly Speaking as a brand. So one of the ways um, was bringing on other bloggers to the, to the wine blog and hosting more events around the city. And so I sort of wanted the, I liked the idea that we were swirling up the urban culture, wine culture of San Antonio. Um, and that's a whole nother thing to get into on why San Antonio is such an op opportunistic city to be in, uh, you know, Venusly speaking. Yes. And um, so anyways, going on with that, having events and, you know, really just focused on making it, you know, a traveling event blog conglomerate thing. And uh, I met a lady at a wine shop and unfortunately she fell very ill. And I needed to sell her shop, and I happened to be there, talked to one of my co-bloggers, and I said, mm -hmm. hey, do you want to buy a wine shop? <laughs> so uh, the opportunity presented itself. We said, you know what, let's go. So now we added a wine shop to the Venusly Speaking Empire. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Um, you know, and I, I've been there, what, maybe a couple times so far. Um, and then you got to close for a little bit because, yeah. you know, TABC has their little... No, government had to get involved, but you're you're open again. You've been open for for a little bit, right? For about yes. a month now. Uh, since beginning of April. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and you just had your grand opening. So mm -hmm. talk to me about the how 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 was that? It was pretty oh, successful, yeah. wasn't it? That was phenomenal. We just had it Thursday through Saturday, May 10th through the 12th. So we did a sort of a soft grand opening Thursday and Friday. We had some food and some wines, but Saturday was the main event, and we had. Um, a DJ there spinning some jazz with downbeat tempo kind of thing going on and uh, funk. And then we had um, 10 different wines to taste, two of each major type, like, you know, two red, two white, two bubbly, two rosé, two mm -hmm. sweet. Um, we had food that was donated by a couple of uh, restaurateurs here in town, which was phenomenal. Um, good cross promotion. And... Um, then we had a lady selling jewelry, so it was just a great time. So on Saturday alone, we have an 800 square foot boutique, so we had a hun about 100 people come through the door, and that was pretty awesome. Our sales were phenomenal. We right. sold through a lot of wine, so and it was very nice. And we also tracked, uh, asked people to fill out door price slips that asked how they found out about the event. So overwhelmingly, people are using Facebook, word of mouth, and our our uh, blog slash website to find out you know about these um so it was really neat to see you know oh so and so sent me and you know this person told me and right. i love your facebook you know account it's so neat to follow that in your blog and so it was uh it was very neat and one of the most important things that i'll close on with the grand opening is that i really believe that people leave an energy on a place um and so when you have a hundred people the same day in a, in a store and everyone is just saying we support you. You're going to be amazing. We love what you've done. We're 100% behind you. You're going to, you know, do it. All that positive energy that people leave that imprint that day. You know, I walked in there um, the next, you know, on Tuesday when I reopened and I was like, wow, this is a whole different shop. I mean, it just had this <laughs> imprint left on it. And that was really great. It meant a lot. So Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, what were your hours of operation? Um, so we're open Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Friday, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And Saturday, noon to 8. And Saturdays, we have free wine tasting, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. And uh, with those tastings, we'll sometimes we'll have special guests, like winemakers come in. Um, there'll be a different theme. Um, we're looking about once every quarter to have, you know, a big uh, event. Uh, I think the one coming up is we're going to do a dual um Independence Day, Bastille's Day event where we can do, you know, American versus French and really okay. red, white, and blue for everything. So that'll be fun to do. So. All right. Cool. Um, so you've got the wine shop. It's, it's been, sounds like it's, it's going pretty well. Um, and then you had, you were contacted by uh, these people. Yes. So it's a <clears throat> newsletter and uh, newsletter blog, really neat interactive forum. It's called Thirsty Girl. Um, so you can sign up for their newsletter, and um, I'm not exactly familiar with who is in charge, but they'll contact other blogs and organize uh, tweet ups where the wine, the winery will send you the wine, or I guess their importer, however that works, and right. they'll send you the wine, and you can sample it, and you can, you know, you don't have to, but it, you know, would be nice if you did anything on Twitter. You know, obviously like this, like a live video, even if you wrote a blog post on it, 
Right. Um, and they do these once every two to three months. So it's a nice way to get some new wines. And I think that's right. a really great thing to, you know, collaborate with other blogs. And, you know, very cool. I'm, I'm happy they contacted me. <laughs> right. <so. laughs> exactly. Well, kind of similar to what, um, what we did a couple weeks ago when we went over to Luce. Um, we had the wine and food bloggers in San Antonio and Austin. Mostly it was San Antonio. We had one Austin blogger. Um, who was very instrumental in getting a whole thing put together, uh, Jeremy uh, Del Bianchi. I'm giving him some props, um, but uh, you know, going over to Luce and and uh, you know, part of that was to get us together. Mm -hmm. But in a way, also, you know, Joe hopefully gets a little bit of um, marketing out of it. You know, oh, yeah. we we went there Monday. Yeah, ran into you. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, um, the food was phenomenal. Uh, the service was great. Uh, Joe was it was a great host. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, as far as like if anybody's in town or coming to town and they're going to be in the north northwest side of town, or yeah. if, even if you want to drive a little bit farther, um, I definitely suggest going to. I mean, there's there's lots of great Italian restaurants in town. Yeah. I can suggest quite a few of them. But you know, having gone there now a yeah. couple times, uh, the food's been phenomenal. So and it's nice too because their patio is yeah just an oasis. Um, it's off I ten and Hebner. There's a little shopping center right off there. Um, if you see uh, Payway or Flying uh, Saucer. Saucer, it's in that corner. Um, so they have a tremendous patio, and their happy hour is one of the best ones. I don't know about you, but I'm a big happy hour <laughs> person. And uh, so it's $4 glass of wine and buy one, get one free appetizer. So it's like, I mean, it goes till 7.30. So you can get there at 7, get a glass of wine, drink it fast and get a second one. Order, you know, if we went there, we each order appetizer, we get another, and we have four right. plates to share the dinner. So yeah. it's ridiculous. Awesome. You know, when we were there for dinner, we were joking that my father could uh, play the accordion on the patio. I don't think they, <laughs> I don't think he said anything to Joe uh, Monday night about it, but uh, we were joking <laughs> about it. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get into the wines. Um, and uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to uh, try to tweet over here that... Uh, Starting the tasting. Yeah. Shall we I pop tasting. these caps? Yes, pop the caps. All right, so uh, uh, starting, we are tasting now, and uh, we're doing the um, we're doing the seller selection, right? Yes. Yeah, so while he's doing that, I'll steal the camera. <laughs> so it says uh, Via Maria. I don't know if it's close enough, but Via Maria is the winery. It's from New Zealand. Um, it's the Sauvignon Blanc grape. It's from Marlborough, uh, the South Island in uh, New Zealand. And both of these are 2011, both Via Maria, both Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this gold label is their seller selection, and the beige red one is their private bin. And on here it says they're celebrating their 50th anniversary. And if we can get a little geeky, they have a QR code on the side that links to their site. So when you're shopping, you just scan over the QR code. You can see what the wine has to say, and they don't have to waste. Oh, I see it. Oh, that one so, has it. This one doesn't yeah. seem to have it. Oh, it doesn't. No, nope, that's okay. Yeah. Well, it's on this one, so. There you go. That's that. Right there. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna start off with this one, right? The seller selection. I think so. We okay. Can... All right. We'll go alphabetically. Seller before private. <laughs> there you go. Well, and then the perceived um, quality level, right? Yeah. This is supposed to be the. You know, that, that supposedly would be the better of the two, so mm -hmm. we'll check it out. Um, so, yeah, the, the Mar so New Zealand obviously is the place for Sauvignon Blanc outside of France, basically. Um, and uh, Marlboro is in the South Island. There's two islands in New Zealand. Uh, there's a North and a South Island. I don't know too much more, but, <laughs> um, no, I mean, but I know Marlboro is um, one of the the... the larger producers of Sauvignon Blanc. There's mm -hmm. a few other smaller um, uh, appellations in New Zealand. Uh, they produce, and they produce more than just Sauvignon Blanc, but this is the, the mm -hmm. main grape yeah. um, that they have. Um, well, I don't want to get like overly businessy about it, but it, if you have time and you're really needing something to do, it's pretty interesting. One of the things that we learned in my master's program was really the case about New Zealand because, you know, it went from, you know, being sort of... Uh, back burner wine producing country and they focused on something that they were producing really well you know I'm sure there was a little bit of luck and you know some really some hardcore people that were taking the case of the Sauvignon Blanc to other places 
But essentially, it's a fascinating marketing tale of how they went from a back burner country to being one of the forerunners of this certain style of Sauvignon right. Blanc. Because, you know, you take a Sauvignon Blanc from France and a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, and you don't have to be a very big wine guru to know that. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with, you know, the French one being a lot more subtle, mineral focused. Right. Um, makes you think of oysters immediately. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have... Of course, you have the typical grapefruit, gooseberry. Sometimes you have a certain feline. Cat pee. Just say it, cat pee. <laughs> in fact, there is a New Zealand wine called Cat's Pee Sauvignon Blanc, and I'm dying to try it. Yeah. And you know on the label for that, that they couldn't bring it in with P on it, so they had to have an H. So if it's in the U.S., you'll see it as Cat's Pee. Pee? Ooh, I didn't know that. It's, I think Actually, it's, I probably was told that. I just yeah. quite forgot about I that. I think the full name is Cat's Pee on a Gooseberry Bush. Um, you know, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents know some people down at the coast uh, that uh, um, love this wine, and they told them about it, and, and it's, I don't know, like three years ago. <laughs> so I've yet, that's, I, not that I'm always searching for it, but if, you know, wherever I go, I just, if I see it, yeah. I'm, hope, I'm hoping to see it, but, you know, yeah. have yet to see it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into this one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really I do get the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess gooseberry. I don't know what a gooseberry is. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you get it out of there? Yeah. Um, I've never actually smelled the gooseberry. I've smelled the extract of a gooseberry, like in those okay. nose kits. Okay, right, So right. I got that. Um, but yeah, so I know what gooseberry is supposed to smell like. never actually have. Um, actually, the one thing for me, though, when we read the notes on it, it said metal. Do you know what metal is? No. Or it smells like? No, don't, just like I don't know what a star fruit tastes like either. <laughs> oh, I've had tried that. So. Okay, good. So then when you say star fruit, I can trust you yeah. because <laughs> when, we were do, when we did the um, first level psalm, we were doing those seminars, the psalms, even the master psalms were like going, just say star fruit. Nobody knows what it tastes like anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and so like the first group that went through, well, not first group, but a couple groups go through and they finally get a white wine and somebody decided to go, I smell star fruit. And everybody had their chuckle. And then a couple of groups later, someone goes, I smell star fruit. And the master psalm's like, no, you don't. Nice try. <laughs> so. I do get a very like a spring grassy. Yes. Not lemongrass. No, Maybe but just like a nice. grassy type of thing. You know, like a fresh cut, fresh mm -hmm. cut grass. You get the grapefruit. There's something else. That I'm really kind of getting off of this. Honestly, it just it it's kind of makes me fruit? maybe, but it also makes me think of of my day job as a restaurant manager and working the the expo area and just all the the combined. You know what it is? It's probably mm. the it's probably the minerality of concrete. Yeah. <laughs> no, because we have concrete floors there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And when when you wash when you wash the floors, yeah, yeah. Um, you get that wet concrete smell. So I think that's I think that's what I'm getting. You know, and, and I don't know, maybe it's because I, I assume I'm supposed to smell the the, um, the ammonia cat pee stuff. <laughs> but I, I, I get something kind of chemical-like, yeah. so. Yeah, let's see what this tastes She swallows. Sorry. <laughs> the irony is, I, I do this at home. I don't go anywhere afterwards, and I still spit. It's just I don't know habit, and I learned it from somebody else. So yeah. well, I learned from Gary. Gary, you know, of course, Gary's at work, so and he tastes hundreds of wine a day, or used to. I don't think he really runs wine library mm -hmm. anymore because he has his Vayner Media. But mm -hmm. um, so he I kind of spit. no, you can drink. I don't care. Um, but uh, um, you know, he he. If he did drink the wines all day long, he, he, oh, yeah. he wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, just saying, I mean, yeah. there's no way you could do it. No, for sure. Um, <laughs> Wine shop. Plus also, too, I mean, it's nice to, when you are, really are evaluating wine, it is nice to at least spit a couple times because when you don't have the alcohol going down into your throat, you are able to pick up some things that maybe otherwise might be masked. Well, yeah, I mean, for me, as I spit, I'm breathing out through my nose so I can get that extra bit of the extra bit of um, aromas up there because if you swallow, I'm not really going to be breathing out and I'm not going to get that. Yeah. So I get that little bit extra. Um, this is really tasty. I mean, yeah. I really get a lot of the citrusy yeah. 
yeah. a lot of the citrus fruit. Um, you know, I, I get, I actually get a little, I, I get a little bit of lemon and lime, yeah. but I really get the grapefruit. Definitely. Um, seems to be kind of like, it, it, I get <clears throat> that Texas grapefruit mm. type of, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not yeah. so tart. Yeah. Um, so if you're not from Texas, you've never had Texas grapefruit, then you're kind of missing out. Get over here and try it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't had a Texas grapefruit in forever, but you know, it's one of those things you remember a, yeah. a taste like that. Um, uh, pretty good acid. Um, but it's it's not it's not really high on the acid. Well, it, it's probably about medium medium high on the acid for me. Yeah. Um, I would put a bit more of a chill to it than what it has. Well, you did chill it, and but it's it's been warming up. Yeah, I mean it's nice, but I guess if I was gonna drink like you know, okay, present it and drink it, maybe a bit more cool, like just out of the fridge. Right, because it, it, because the acid won't be as because the acid is a little bit probably more prominent than what most people probably gonna really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I tend to drink my all my wines at whatever the temperature of the house is. So yeah. um, even the whites, um, and even like just drinking, drinking, I'll tend to drink them like that. But you know, some of the whites they get a little harsh to drink at yeah. room temperature. So I'll stick them in the fridge for a little bit just so that they yeah. cool down, so you can, so you can kind of calm mm-hmm. it down. But this is a great one to put with food. Um, I'm getting a lot of aromas that you're gonna find on your Asian cuisines. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything lemongrass. I want some like tom kakai soup, like lemongrass, coconut milk, and this zesty acidic Sauvignon Blanc. I'm getting hungry. I mean, you can do prawns with I like lemon cream. Gra- um, I don't know. I'm gonna go on forever. Really <laughs> like, I love to cook, but it's a very nice wine to put with uh, Asian foods. Um, some really amazing goat cheese, like herb goat cheese, would be great with it. And, um, but yeah, so I think these wines are roughly like $15 retail, um, not much more than that. So really great for your week time, great for summer. Um, and if you're one of those people that has a really huge aversion to grapefruit Sauvignon Blanc, sorry. Yeah, you're not going to like this. I'm not going to like it. Um, although I, I do, think it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm... I'm, you know, people, you get the people like, anything but Chardonnay, I don't like oaky Chardonnay, yeah. I don't like grapefruit this. I'm kind of an equal opportunity person. It doesn't really bother me either way. It's like, depends right. on what you're pairing it with, who you're drinking it with, um, the music you're listening to. Right. Well, and, and I've had that discussion with many people. A lot of times, <clears throat> you know, the, the environment that you have the wine in, like when, when I evaluate and when mm-hmm. you evaluate wines, we're kind of in this kind of clinical type of environment. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the house and, and all that, but it's like you're focused on the wine itself. You're not really enjoying the wine necessarily. You're not with friends yeah, and you're family or, for something. you know, and, and so the wine, the, so the wine is the focus in this situation, whereas yeah. in, in a social setting, it's it's not the focus necessarily. I mean, sometimes it is. I mean, if you're with a bunch of wine geeks yeah. and you're, you're kind of evaluating wines, but, you know, a lot of times in general, it's, it's adding to the social uh, social yeah. aspect of of the event, so you'll have it where you're like, oh, that was an awesome wine, yeah. and then you go, okay, I'm going to buy it and I'm yeah. going to drink it. And even if it's not trying to be evaluating the wine, you come mm-hmm. home, you're like, oh, it really wasn't that good. Yeah. Ambiance doesn't travel well. <laughs> yeah. So um, so that's where <clears throat> you know a lot of times if if you've had those wines and you feel you're disappointed with um, how it's tasted outside of you know a great dinner or a wedding an event. And then you get home, you buy, you buy it again, or someone sends it to you, and you kind of go, man, it wasn't really as good as I remember. You know that that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of times is that thing. But this is, you know, this is a wonderful wine. Uh, you know, this is really nice to do. It's really great if you want to have that purse look lip purse <laughs> lip, lip look the entire night because it's really acidic. So it makes right. you like this. Do you, like that, yeah. <laughs> So wear red lipstick if you're going to drink this, because then you have red lipstick and you're like, hello. <laughs> you should. You really should. <laughs> Funny story, I did that. I, had, I was in a school play once. <laughs> I had make it, full makeup on, you know, and the girls were loving it. They were like, oh, wait, my makeup on now. Yeah. I'm like, going, yeah, okay. So we do the, so we, it was a rehearsal. No, no, I think we actually did the play. I don't know. It was high school. So um, we're done with, <clears throat> I guess it was the rehearsal. We're done with the rehearsal. And um, I kind of so I kind of go to the girls. I'm like, how do I take the stuff off? And they just start laughing. So what I do, I drive over to <clears throat> where my mom worked at the time. Full makeups. Uh, I was like, hi, how you doing? Uh, I didn't say maybe I said something similar, but I just kind of was like, hi. And she just looked at me. Like, what? <clears throat> I said, how do I take this off? And she told me. <laughs> um, but um, 
No, I think this is I think it's a wonderful wine. Yeah. Do, um, did, did they give you information on how much uh, a I bottle think it's is? I fourteen ninety nine. Okay, so Retail. oh, great great price for it. Um, you know, if it was up to twenty dollars, I'd still say it was a great wine to buy. Um, fourteen dollars is totally reasonable. I think it's a a wonderful thing. Um, if uh, if you're in the market for it, if you can find mm -hmm. it, um, I would definitely recommend it. You yeah. know, and, and it's something that uh, I w would love to have more of. It's also nice if you're ever doing a sort of tasting where you want a wine that's very typical and representative of the country or the region that it's from. Um, so you can say, you know, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand or Marlborough, New Zealand specifically. This is a great wine. It's not going to break your bank. It's representative. It has all those flavors you get. Um, you know, just like getting a Sauvignon Blanc from, you know, your French regions. Um, you know, in the Loire Valley type, uh, you're, you mm -hmm. know, you can have these to have a very characteristic. So this is a great one to have um, if you aren't familiar with New Zealand and want to explore. Try to make sure I spell everything right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I need to have a, a video made of the different ways people pronounce venously speaking. It's like venously <laughs> speaking. Even I kind of changed because I... Because you, you say venously and I say maybe I I can, no I think I say venously I think venously. instead of venously. Yeah. Um, then you get people that say veniciously and veniciously. I'm like veniciously. Well, you know, <laughs> it's 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 a kind of an unusual word. Yeah. It's, oh, so, but we do have the definition. Yes, you do. Oh, you had the definition on the back, right? All right, so I'll read it off or see if we can maybe the manner in which one does things under the influence of wine, such as speaking. There you go. Now I, she she's giving me a shirt that that says real men. Read Venicely speaking yeah. wine blog something like that. I have that shirt. Yeah. I think I wore it for for a few episodes back yeah. when you gave it to me. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's great. I just tweeted that you know we we really like the wine, um, value yeah. priced, uh, the, some of the flavors. So um, <clears throat> we're tweeting on that. All right. Hold cool. on. Somebody just wrote the head pool boy just got home and he's making crab cakes. That'll be perfect. With oh the yeah. Wine. If I liked crab, I don't know. Would it be? Have I don't know. Pool boy. What is this? You have multiple pool boys? Well, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I don't care about the pool boy. <laughs> He's the head pool boy. <laughs> but I would say you know, uh, crab cakes probably go well with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a seafood person. I've had some seafood. I've, pa you know, I've paired it with some wines. I kind of get the ideas to why. <sighs> How do you not like seafood? I would love seafood. Yeah, and the irony was I had... I was almost not quite almost but i was potentially going to be the psalm over at that uh, seafood place in, in, ah. per, in sandbar and i didn't like seafood but that's okay that would be. yeah hey you know i would have not may not learned to like seafood but i will have learned to at least appreciate the pairings you know you can have oysters with like a lemongrass vinaigrette i'll let you have that I'd, <laughs> i'll take i'll take like a salad with that that'd be awesome the world is my oyster <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, we'll get a little close up of that, and hopefully, I didn't. So just the next one, just to remind you, Via Maria, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, two thousand eleven, just like the other one, but this one's private bin, and they're celebrating their fifty year anniversary. So yeah. All right, so this is the uh, private bin. Private bin. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There you go. All right. All right. <clears throat> I had one time I did this. I did like a live tasting once, and I got someone yelling at me because I was, I was um, bogarting the, uh, the Twitter stream by trying to move people to my video instead of like keeping people in the in the tweet chat. Mm. Like, dude. I mean, it's what I do. I do video stuff. I think this is what I think. Okay. Doesn't matter if you think this or not out there in the audience. I think that these types of things should be there should be more video stuff going on. People have webcams in their in their laptops. I think they should be doing Skype or Google yeah. Google uh, Hangouts and and talking like real time about this instead of tweeting. Maybe you, can, you tweet at the same time, but then you can do. It. I mean, I don't. I mean, obviously, got the webcam going here, but this is this camera's not a webcam. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ZI8 can't hook into the computer and, and broadcast, but. Um, you know, that's what I think really these types of things should be. They should be, I mean, not that you can't do this, but if you have the ability to Skype and get some people together to really have that 
one on one conversation. Yeah. I think they should be doing it. Yeah. But no one's asking me, so whatever. That that's that's my soapbox moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm also like a online stalker of sorts, so I like to uh-huh. see people. I like to, you know, ooh, it's a real person, well, and what can I find out about them? You can you can still Skype, but not have your camera on. Mm. You can listen to them. You can watch them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, so you can do that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about Google Hangouts if you can do that, but Skype you can. Not that I've done that. I just know you can because sometimes people we do the Skype thing and they're mm-hmm. like, I can't. I don't see anything, or I say, I can't see you. And they're like, uh, and press the little <laughs> camera button. Okay. Sometimes being the geek is, unfortunately, being the geek and you're 1,500 miles away, you can't, like, reach through their computer yeah, and go, hit can't. this. <laughs> you kind of have to guide them through yep. it. All right, so we've got the private bin. Uh, let me grab that. I'll show the, uh, Ew, I'll show. Uh-oh. What, what was that, an ooh? No, ooh, like ooh. Oh, ooh isn't a good thing? No. Oh, maybe I should... Look at the live. Here we go. Okay, so I lied. So the first one was fourteen ninety nine. So that's okay. correct. This one is a different price, which I won't say it. You won't say it. Okay. So you know the price, and um, I'm but gonna guess it's more. Because yeah, judging if it, by my if it says private, I'm gonna assume, well just by that I'm gonna assume it's more. It'd be really funny if the private bin was like eight dollars. But all right. Mm, yummy. All right. So this has a little more luscious. Um, Citrusy, I do get the grapefruit, but it's not as, it's it's um, not flat, not not, not um, um, wider. Yeah. Um, it's more balanced with the other yeah. elements. Yeah, it's it's. I want to say smooth. It's, I guess it's a smoother type of yeah. aroma to it. it. It's it's not as sharp. Yeah, because I think like you know, if you can, if I can personify these wines, this wine, while it's still very good, is like. If you took one member of all the different high school cliques and you put them in the same room and they didn't talk to each other, but they just were their own person and they existed in the same space. Whereas this one is like they've been together for a while and then they kind of become friends and they're all getting along really well together. Okay. So that's my... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get, you know, like with, with the other wine, I was getting the, arom- the, the uh, ammonia chemical stuff. This is it's just really just more of a citrus and a fruit stuff. Yeah, and you don't even need this one is chilled, but you know it's like European cellar temperature. Okay. I, you don't, I don't think you would need to even chill it more than this. Okay. Because it's still very balanced, still very nice. This one, I think it just needs a little bit more because the acidity. Not that I don't enjoy that. Um, I will. Should I say the price? Not yet. You okay. taste it first. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the other thing is, I I, I get um, it feels like I, I or it seems like I'm smelling the the, the skin of a peach, mm, so I yeah. get that fuzziness. And I think that's what it was. I was getting oh. the fuzziness out of it. Yeah, that's very true. That's something that I tend to pick up. One of the things, if I get it, I, mm. I pick up on. And we each have those little one those little things that you. you know. That's the only thing that you ever. You're the only one ever gets it. You go, I get this peach skin, and somebody else goes, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, or star fruit, or I don't know. Yeah. But I do, I get that, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Smelling is amazing. This is a a fuller wine to me. It, it coats it coats my mouth oh, a yeah. little bit better. Um I, I'm not it's not that it has a creamy texture necessarily, but it feels like it has more body to it mm-hmm. um, than than the other one. Um, even though the acid doesn't seem to be very like prominent, it feels like it's just as acidic as the other one because I'm really salivating. Um, you know, it's I, it, like you said, balance. It's it's yeah. much more balanced. Yeah. It's um, oh yeah. It's I, I I think I like this. I like them both. Yeah. And I, I like them for for different things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but if I was just if I had to pick one, it would be this one. Mm-hmm. But but the uh, cellar selection, I would easily drink. Yeah. Um, well, and it, regarding to food, this one is nice. If you don't, this one I kind of feel like it would be even better with food. Whereas this one, it's you can totally do by itself. fine by itself. Yeah, easily you can do it by itself. Easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or 
you know, and if you were going to pair it with food, like whereas this one would go great with something aromatic, this one will be really nice with something very simple, mm -hmm. um, you know, not too many ingredients, very, um, yeah. Well, something that uh, um, we've had at the house is, you know, this like fruit salad thing. I think both would go, but I think this would be better because yeah. it wouldn't compete yeah. with the with the fruit um, as much, or like with with a meat and cheese tray, or or, or meat and or like a prosciutto and melon. Yep. I think if you pair this with cantaloupe and prosciutto or uh, prosciutto. Prosciutto. Okay. <laughs> if you uh, this would I think pair really really well with it because it would balance with it, whereas mm -hmm. that one might the seller I think what would happen is it would pair it would be okay. But it would kind of compete with yeah. you know, the acidity. Would kind of compete with with the with the saltiness. Like the, it and, would be more mineral. Yeah. Like, like more minerality would come out because the saltiness. Right. Of the, of of the, the yeah. So, um, I think I think it's. I mean, both wines yeah. are great. No, I completely um, agree. Yep, I definitely do. So can I tell you the price now? <laughs> yes, tell me the price. Okay, so it's twenty one ninety nine. All right, good, good. I was, <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't too much more than twenty one yeah. to twenty yeah, twenty yeah. to twenty five because that's what I was guessing. Yeah. I was like, man, this is like a forty dollar bottle of wine. I'm like going, well, okay. I mean, not not that it wouldn't yeah, be worth but, it, but I I wouldn't have expected it to be yeah. that pricey. I think it's uh, I think it's really great. Yeah, I mean, and you know, that's the other neat thing too is that even at twenty one ninety nine, I mean, it's not exactly gonna like break the bank. You can have it for like a nice weekend um, dinner or, you know, if you want to bring it to a party and you don't want to feel, you know, embarrassed with your selection or something, right. that would be, not that that would, but it would be very nice. So I agree. Tasty. A great wine to celebrate a 50th anniversary. <clears throat> hmm. Yes. <laughs> Because that's their 50th anniversary, yeah, right? Yeah. That's right. I saw that in the back label. You know, like you know how you have the, um, you know, the gifts you're supposed to give on an anniversary, like gold right. is the 50th or whatnot. I feel like we should start something where it's what wine to give on what anniversary. Like you should give a riesling on a first anniversary, or okay, because give a all right. Yeah, and like kind of match like the flavor profile, like uh, you know, you can give like a cabernet, and you know a. Ten-year-old Cabernet Sauvignon on the ten-year anniversary because it symbolizes like the coming together of the you know I don't know so you could figure out a way to make it work but all right <clears throat> so so what what's what's this going to be um, not fiftieth yeah I don't think it'll be fiftieth I'd probably like a five-year anniversary okay like you know you're kind of getting together the seven-year itch hasn't happened uh huh um and you know it's still like a neat mile marker so okay. I'm gonna go with fifth anniversary. That one, that should be before you get married. I think that's more like an engagement wine. Okay. All right. Now, you have a, now, because she's starting to do this unusual pairing, she has a partner in crime that, that does fashion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, Melissa. Yeah, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melissa Unsel is my business partner in the shop, but she um, first came on and still is there at the blog as Venusly Chic. So she does fashion with wine pairing. Right. So she'll pair either like depending on the season, the texture, the country that the fashion designer's from. I'm I personally am not into fashion. I don't know anything about it. I have a uniform every day. That I wear. <laughs> but it's incredible what she does. It's very cool and you know, um I I guess it also helps me think about more about fashion because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take this wine. How can I pair myself with it? Mm -hmm. So it kinda helps me a bit of very nice. Yeah, so I don't know what how she would pair any of this stuff, but I remember the, the when we did the the joint mm -hmm. like three shows, um, she had some creative uh, yeah, uh, yeah. suggestions there. I think so, she had you wearing like a some, furry some, bolero yeah, and yeah, I don't know, boots. furry boots or something. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, no, Uggs or something like that. No way. Mm -hmm. No, this is this. I like this one a lot. Yeah, I. And at twenty one dollars, twenty two dollars, it's it's very very well priced. Yep. I agree. And I also, like, with this one, the one thing for me is I'm a big on food pairing. So I really enjoy Asian cuisines, and I think that would go great with Thai food, a um, little bit of Vietnamese cuisine mm -hmm. going on there. So um, one of the other things that I enjoy being in the wine industry is it's a blessing and a curse because, you know, the actual price of things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Even in my, my end of things. Yep. 
we tend to see what the, well, okay, <clears throat> had a great discussion with, with another psalm about this. The type of restaurant I'm in, we, we, we sell wine, but we, we're not big sellers of wine. We don't move a lot of wine. Mm-hmm. So we get charged close to retail. Not quite, but if, if, if this is a $21 bottle of wine, if we sell it at our restaurant, we'll get charged 18 to $20, okay, per bottle. But if you're a wine, <clears throat> a wine-centric um, restaurant, you might be selling it close. You might be buying it closer to what you, as a wine retailer, yep. are paying for it. Yeah, oh, <clears throat> that's pretty interesting. Yes, because uh, what what he was telling me was that a lot of times, like his bottles, <clears throat> what he sells to the restaurant on, on the wine list is almost exactly the same price as you can buy it at a wine shop, and occasionally it's okay. cheaper. Occasionally cheaper if they get a, if they're if they're like like the number one like I forgot which one it's in a, it's one of the Italian wines <clears throat> that that he sells they are the number one seller in the country for it that restaurant wow no no retail shop does does more Goodness. of it they they sell they 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 got the whole allocation last year um, so they sell a lot of it and the price and they sell at a reasonable price so it's really good and, and by the way it's um, well, Sonio is, is the name of the of the restaurant. So, and Gabe's the psalm there. And uh, so, he, his philosophy really is he's not there to screw you on on the price of the wine. If you want the two hundred and fifty dollar bottle of wine, he'll sell it to you. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> but at the same time, he's not there to try to push the most expensive bottle of wine. Yeah. He wants to give you the wine that you're going to yeah. like. Yeah. If it's the twenty dollar bottle, and that's going to make you happy, he's yeah. more than happy to sell you that bottle of wine. If he's if he wants to get you um, if you're looking to be a little explore a little more, you're trying to expand your knowledge, expand your 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 palate. He he'll be there to help you. And that's what a yeah. psalm should do. And I know a yeah. lot of other psalms will do the same thing. But he and he and I've had that discussion a few times, and it's yeah. really nice to to know yeah. that there's people out there to do that. Well, even like in the wine shop, you know, I mean, people come in and it's like, you know, whether it's the discussion or do you carry a wine like this, you know. I don't even buy over a certain price point. Right. You know, if someone pours it for me or offers it to me, I'm certainly not going to turn it down. But at this point in my life, I have a certain price point that I stay in. And why would I expect my customers to be different? Right. Yeah, because you, you're you're same same scenario. You're you're not looking you're looking to provide good value to to mm-hmm. the people that come into your shop. You're not there to you're not there to screw them. Mm-mm. You're not you're you know and and your your clientele. Yeah. Uh, isn't necessarily going to come in and get that yeah. Chateau de Camp. Yeah, well, if they want to, sure, yeah, yeah. you'd be more than happy yeah, to sell it to yeah. them. But well, and it's you know with whether it's retail or you know restaurant front, but you know when you do that, you you create a loyal customer because they know that when they go back, you're going to offer them the same thing. Yes. You're not going to try to gouge their eyes out. You know, you understand like you know you put both their palate and their pocketbook <laughs> at the forefront and. I think that that's, uh, you know, always nice. And I love, I mean, one of the biggest things for me is I love telling someone, oh, this wine's amazing, I love it, and it's only right. $15. And, you know, I think people enjoy that a lot. And uh, it's Well, yeah, the idea is that, um, you know, yeah, you can make the you can make one really big sale, mm-hmm. but that person will never come back to your shop. Yep. Or you can make really good sales for people at reasonable prices and they'll keep coming back. You'll mm-hmm. make more money off of that person throughout the year yeah. than you will for the person that comes once yeah. ever or comes only once in a while, yeah. maybe a couple times a year because yeah. whatever the reason is, maybe a particular bottle they bought, is mm-hmm. o- you only carry it, nobody else has it, and they're like, ah, fine, I'll go back to that shop exactly. and buy it, yeah. even though I'm going to get overcharged, you yeah. know, charged too much money yeah. for it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I... <clears throat> both these wines are great. Um, mm-hmm. I think we both prefer the the private bin yeah. a little bit more. Um, but it, if either one was poured for me, I wouldn't complain. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially you know fourteen dollars, twenty one dollars. Mm-hmm. I think they're they're awesome, yeah. awesome values. Yeah. Um, are these um, now? Imagine these are not wines that you carry. No, not yet. Um, would they be wines that you'd be looking at carrying? Oh, certainly. I mean, I think that the price. Okay, so we're back. Um, we're back. The battery ran out. I think it's the first time I've had that happen because I don't have it plugged in. Um, 
get this nice little hum if the if the camera's plugged into the wall socket because I'm using the boom mic. You know, I can't really see. I'm pointing up, can't really see it. Um, so we were talking about if you would carry it in the shop, and uh, so yes. you said yes. Now explain why would you? Um, so I really enjoy the price point for the wines. They fall into the category that people often buy. Um, also, I really enjoy asking people, you know, when they're going to drink it, what they're going to drink it, who they're going to drink it with, um, and different things like this. So because I know them, because I know what they would pair nicely with, and I'm behind them, mm -hmm. I have, you know, they'd be nice to have, and when someone mentions something, I can suggest it. Um, we have a Chinese uh, restaurant that's down the street, so, you know, let's say someone's eating there, or a Thai place close by, hey, bring this one. Um, hey, you know, I'm I'm going to a uh, you know wine dinner party this evening, and I don't know what to bring. Hey, bring the you know Via Maria private bin. Everyone's going to enjoy it. Um, so this is these are the things I enjoy finding. You know, good values for your dollar, and something that you're not going to be embarrassed about. You okay. Know, that you know, I mean, people not everybody's geeky right, <laughs> about right. wine like we are. So you know, you just people just want to know that when it's open, nobody's going to make fun of them for what they brought. And I think these are certainly those. Cool. Wins, so. All right, so um, we're going to go and wrap it up because obviously if I've run out of battery time, we've run for a very long time. Um, we're, we're probably, this. We, I started this clock really mm -hmm. early and we didn't really get started with the actual show until about 15 minutes into this. So yeah. we're almost at an hour minus the time it took to redo everything. So it's a long show. But anyway, um, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. I mean, it's wonderful. I'm so glad that you came over. Yeah, thank uh, one, you for having me. That way, you know, one, you know, we we did the we did the collaboration thing, but you know, I'm trying to get into more interview type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so having so knowing you outside of all this mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier to be a, a, a interview subject interviewee. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but at the same time, um, it's a great way to expose you to uh, not just. You know, we're doing a wine tasting, but expose you and, and get people to know who you are as yeah. um, far as people that follow me. Yeah. Uh, but then also being able to do this wine tasting, um, yeah. it, it's great, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, some good wine, and yes. obviously if, if you can find it out there, buy it. Yeah, and uh, thank you to Thirsty Girl yes. uh, Tasting. Um, the hashtag, if you wanted to look on it to see what other people said, was hashtag TG Taste. Mm -hmm. um, and you can follow it there um, if you want to sign up for the Thirsty Girl newsletter. Uh, there's Venus Lee Speaking Wine blog, and of course, uh, our host, the 1337 Wine, uh, Elite Wine. Um, but thank you very much for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, it's my first interview. There you go. Um, see? Thank you so. <laughs> All right, and I'll be doing some. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now, you're not, no one's really going to see this until probably next, probably Monday. Mm -hmm. But so between now and Monday, I'll have interviews with. Uh, Stephen over at uh, Francesca and the Ooh. chef. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Ernie he, Estrada? Yes. Yeah, yes. Ernie. He's cool. Um, and so I'll, be, <laughs> so I'll be interviewing them tomorrow for Francesca for uh, the culinary uh, stuff. And then, mm -hmm. um, so look for that. That'll be next. Yeah. <clears throat> and then after that, I will be um, uh, over going to Saturday. Oh, all these emails. Uh, Saturday. Um, I will be doing the, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Culinary Grand Tasting, mm. and I will be interviewing Jason Dady and John wow. Brand. Wow. Check and then uh, oh. apparently some other wine experts. I'll be getting cool. a little bit early. Um, I'm not going to be part of the, the pre-bubbly thing. I'm just there for the Grand Tasting, which is fine. I don't care. Um, so, but I'll be, uh, I mean, I've met Jason before. Okay. Um, we really haven't talked a whole lot, but I, we, we, know, we, we know each other, okay. but you know, that's about it. Um, so it'll be really cool to, to get him on camera and John Brand. I really have never met, so mm -hmm. I kind of need to kind of research who he is. So I don't <laughs> look stupid. Um, I don't know a lot of chefs. I know these these are a lot of these chefs are like well well known in San Antonio, but mm -hmm. um, the circles that I run in aren't the same circles that they run in. So yeah. uh, um, yeah. I, I know who Jason is because he's really big into social media. So yeah. uh, and I've, I've visited his restaurants. He has some really good restaurants. He's got Bin Five Fifty Five. They've been there. It was really good. Try yep. Tutoria. Yep. I went to the one on Broadway. That was really good. Uh, that, uh, really good. The barbecue. Two brothers. No. Yes, two brothers. Yep. Yeah, that. Um, Daddy truck. The duck truck. The, the duck truck. He's got that. And the, I'm kind of already giving you a, a little preview of what he's going to talk about. We'll, we'll make sure to talk about all of his. All this stuff. He did have um, a restaurant that he did recently close. I can't remember what it was. Oh, the lodge. The lodge. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never had a chance to go check that one out. But um, uh, 
but yeah, he's he's got you know quite a few places here, mm-hmm. so I'm excited to really yeah. talk to him like in a real like interview thing and get to meet John. I mean, I I, I know his name, I just don't really know much yeah. about him. You know, well, I know I he's I know he's yeah. well known. I I mean, I know of Jason Dady. I've never actually met him. I've been in the same close vicinity as he has. Right. But I'm so, I get sort of starstruck because I like to cook, so I'm like. Oh. I don't care about cooking. So, so. <laughs> for me, it's like. <laughs> Uh, but I get chefs. Chefs yeah. don't intimidate me, but the, but I do. Um, uh, I really do respect what they do. Mm. I'm just not somebody that cooks, so mm-hmm. I, it's kind of like yeah. I, I don't really, I don't, I don't catch their language. But at the same time, I, I'm fascinated with the. I mean, mm-hmm. I am in restaurant business. I am fascinated with the food aspect. Yeah. Um, I tell my bartenders that they're like chefs behind the bar. They have all these wonderful ingredients mm-hmm. they can make all these great drinks with. So they should think of themselves as chefs with mm-hmm. alcohol. So I, I really yeah. respect what chefs do. I just I just don't get into yeah. the food aspect, I guess, as much as they do. Yeah. But well, and that's what the, that's what the wine people are there for. <laughs> that we're supposed to help them with the wine side. Exactly. Well, I think you'll have a great time with uh, Stephen and uh, Ernie um, right. Estrada. There, I met them. Well, I've known Steve for a while. Stephen, um, he's a very cool cat. So tell him to say hi. I will. And uh, Ernie, I met him just recently, and he is very very neat. I think you'll enjoy his personality awesome. as well. And so. All right, cool. Um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Uh, come to the website. Leave comments below. Uh, friend me up on the social networking stuff. Uh, I'll have links for the wine. I'll have links for Ceci's uh, blog slash wine shop. Make sure you stop by and visit those. And um, hit the donate button over there. Throw a few ducats my way. Maybe I could buy you know, a $14 bottle of wine. And uh, we'll save everyone again next time. <laughs>